Hey everybody, this is Landry with Evoke Bike. Um, and I wanted to make a little bit of a video discussing uh, what actually is the, the right amount of carbohydrates to be taking in uh, while you're training. So historically, we thought that uh, 90 grams of carbs per hour was enough. Uh, in the past couple of years, there's actually been some research coming out saying that um, 120 grams of carbs is actually better and that that's the amount that we should be taking in. Um, and I was reading some research, uh, this paper from 2018 that I thought was really interesting that kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, and then it got me thinking, hmm, maybe 90 grams of carbs per hour is better than 120 grams of carbs. Um, but then I went and read through this paper um, from 2020 and then this kind of took me back the other way and I started to think that no, probably 120 grams of carbs uh, when you're training hard is probably actually more optimal. So I wanted to discuss these two different papers um, and why I think that still 120 grams of carbs is probably going to be optimal uh, during hard training. So just a little bit of an overview, um, the benefits of eating carbs on your rides, as I'm sure most of you know, um, that you want to ingest carbohydrates on your ride because you have a very limited source of stored muscle glycogen. And so when you eat carbs on your ride, basically your body's going to use uh, those carbs that you're taking in for energy rather than using your muscle glycogen. So you're able to preserve uh, your muscle glycogen um, for longer um, by eating carbs on your ride. So you're able to keep that fuel within your system and preserve it when you are ingesting carbs on your ride. So, um, and then here basically glucose has an upper oxidation rate of about one gram per minute. So that's around 60 grams uh, of carbs per hour. Um, but when you ingest fructose along with it, that you can go up to even 90 to 100 grams of carbs per hour um, on your rides uh, during training. And so there's two different transporters. We have the glucose transporter and the fructose transporter. And so if we have both glucose and fructose, um, we can kind of hit both of those transporters and take in even more carbs than just 60 grams of carbs. Um, and some of the older research, we thought that that's why the upper limit was just 60 grams of carbs per hour, because we thought that, um, well, because we were only looking at glucose and not fructose. But then we found out, oh, if we take in fructose along with that, we can actually absorb more carbs. Um, so in this study, basically what they did was they had um, cyclists do uh, five different experimental trials. So basically they rode for two hours, uh, kind of at endurance pace, like a hard endurance pace. Um, and then they did a 30 minute self-paced time trial after that. So kind of simulating um, a race. So where you maybe fall in a few moves, it's kind of a hard endurance sort of tempo pace. And then the end of the race gets really, really hard. Um, and Every cyclist did every single trial. So in one of the trials, they had 60 grams of just glucose. They had 75 grams of just glucose. Um, another condition, they had 90 grams of glucose and fructose. Um, and they had 112 grams of glucose and fructose. Um, and lastly, they had um, a placebo where they weren't taking in any carbohydrates. Um, so what they found was... Um, they found that, um, the glucose, the 90 grams glucose fructose and the uh, 112 grams glucose fructose, both, uh, significantly improved performance over the other conditions, but they actually found that 90 grams was actually the highest, uh, performance versus all the other conditions. But the main thing that was really interesting that they talked about was the actual utilization of the fuel. So um, what they found was that 112 grams per hour was actually more than 
their body was able to absorb. And so they kind of called this an overdose effect, which surprisingly, when they ingested 112 grams of carbs per hour, they actually had a greater reliance on pre-existing muscle glycogen. So um, this is the first study to show that an increase in glucose fructose dose from 90 to 112 grams of carbs per hour caused a greater reliance on pre-existing muscle glycogen. So basically what this is saying is that um, going above 90 grams of carbs per hour is actually going to cause you to lose muscle glycogen. So you're actually going to be using more of your stored carbohydrate sources if you go over 90 grams of carbs per hour. So that's actually a bad thing. We are, we are using our fuel faster um, that we want to preserve. And so, uh, you know, taken together, this leads to the conclusion um, that uh, rate of ingestion should reach but not exceed intentional uh, intestinal saturation transporters for either glucose or glucose fructose. Um, in conclusion, ingestion, ingestion of 90 grams of carbs per hour is recommended for prolonged exercise performance. Um, and that ingesting um, more than what can be absorbed causes an overdose effect, whereby uh, muscle glycogen uh, oxidation and exercise performance is actually diminished. So this study is saying that we should only eat 90 grams of carbs per hour because if we go over that, we're actually going to be using more of our muscle glycogen because there's a weird effect where if we ingest more than our body can absorb, that we're going to rely more on our stored muscle glycogen uh, than, uh, than with 90 grams of carbs per hour which I thought was really interesting and surprising. So that got me thinking, hmm, maybe we should only be eating 90 grams of carbs per hour. And we've been saying 120. Um, but then this study, which is also really interesting. Um, in this study, basically, they looked at uh, mountain marathon runners. Um, and they looked at the difference between 60, 90, and 120 grams of carbs um, and basically how that affected their muscle damage after the fact, and also the exercise load. Um, so the idea of this study was to kind of look at how does our carbohydrate ingestion affect not necessarily our performance, but our recovery. So yeah, is ingesting more carbohydrates going to improve our ability to recover from day to day? um with either 90 or 120 grams of carbs per hour so what they found here was uh, if we go down to the graphs they found that in the 120 grams of carbs per hour condition the experimental group they did find that internal exercise load was significantly lower than the 60 grams of carbs per hour group and the 90 grams of carbs per hour group uh, the other really interesting thing is, is that there was actually no difference between 60 and 90 grams of carbs per hour. Um, so basically this internal exercise load, the way they calculated this was they took the rate of perceived exertion from, from the runners, and then they also um, multiplied that by their, uh, the their finishing time. So basically a lower score uh, at this internal exercise load may basically means that they, they finished faster. Um, they, had a, they had a lower finishing time and then also that their RPE was lower. So basically with 120 grams of carbs per hour, uh, they went faster and also it felt easier. So this is actually in contrast to this 2018 study saying that 90 grams of carbs is, uh, is going above that is not going to be beneficial. Um, and they also used the same exact ratios of glucose to fructose. They used the two to one ratio. Um, so that's really interesting. So if we can't absorb more than 90 grams of carbs per hour, why would, be, why would we be seeing uh, a lower RPE and an increase in performance. Um, 
What they also found was that exercise induced muscle damage was also significantly lower than 60 and 90 grams of carbs per hour in this 120 uh, 20 gram group. So these are all basically uh, biologic markers that would indicate muscle damage. So obviously if you do a hard training session and you have really torn up muscles afterwards, that's going to impair your recovery for the next day. So they did find uh, that there was much lower exercise induced muscle damage. And again, they found really no difference between 60 and 90 grams of carbs per hour. So taken in conjunction, if we look at both of these two studies, uh, which is better, 90 grams of carbs per hour or 120 grams of carbs per hour? This is saying, don't go above this because you're not going to perform any better and you're going to be using more, more carbs than you should. Uh, and this is saying, this is going to make things feel easier and you're going to cause less damage to your body. This is going to preserve uh, or prevent muscle damage. Uh, with this 80 gram or 90 grams of carbs study though, this 2018 study, I think there's quite a few limitations. So first of all, um, they didn't look at day-to-day -day performance. These were one-off trials. So they were coming in rested to every single session and, you know, this study is saying that 120 grams of carbs is really going to help our recovery. So if they did this, say, day after day after day, um, and they made it a longitudinal study, or they had the athletes in the middle of a really hard training block, you know, say they did the time trial uh, session after at the end of a 20 hour week of training or something. Uh, I, I bet the results would look a lot different. I bet they would have found that 120 grams of carbs would have caused greater performance because these guys would have been more recovered. So why do I think that 120 grams of carbs is still better than 90? Well, I think that this is a lot more uh, practical to real world uh, training. You're not just doing, you're not just doing one-off time trial sessions and then resting, you know, you're not resting three days in between every single one of your training sessions. You're out training every single day uh, to get stronger or you're doing stage races or whatever. And that all adds up not only over the course of a week, but over the course of a year. I mean, if you're able to recover faster, you can train harder. That's going to give you more gains. That's also going to limit the physiologic strain that you're putting on your body. So you're probably uh, going to perform more consistently throughout the year uh, because you're just going to be recovering better. So uh, with a real world application, I think you're going to see higher performance with 120 grams of carbs per hour because you're gonna be recovering faster. So even if maybe with a one-off session, you could perform perhaps better as the study is suggesting with 90 grams of carbs per hour, if we're looking over the long term, the day-to-day, -day, the week-to-week, -week, the month-to-month, -month, and you're doing 120 grams of carbs per hour, I would venture to say that even if you're not able to uh, absorb 120 grams of carbs per hour, that over the long term, you're going to be performing better with 120 grams of carbs because it's going to help your recovery. And that's something that a lot of people don't think about is they think, oh, you know, I can just get by on, on 60 grams of carbs for this ride. And it's not going to, you know, I can do the ride just fine, but they're not thinking about how does this affect your recovery for the next day and for the next day and for the next day? If you're starting out on Tuesday, uh, you know, at the beginning of the week and you're not hitting those carb targets, well, you might not feel on Wednesday, but heck, by the time Thursday rolls around or by the time you have your long ride on Saturday, you might be running on empty. So I'll have like to say, um, I think 120 grams of carbs is still optimal and um, that it's not just important for the day of training, but also looking at the long term uh, in terms of recovery for the next day. So 
keep carbon up, keep training hard, and I'll see you guys in the next video.